All right, guys. Welcome back to Alt Play. Uh, it's Car Craft this time. For those of you not know, Car Craft is a show where I make, break, and fix custom magic cards. Uh, today, we're going to do two things. Today, we're going to make a card or a set of cards using the artwork below me. It's an art challenge day. Uh, and then after we make those four cards, what we'll do is we will review a card from a previous episode. Uh, we're going to take a look at all the cards going with Death Shadow. Got a few reviews of that. That's all right. Let's focus on one thing at a time. First, let's work on a card using this card art. Uh, this art was done by Simon Pope. Uh, I believe it was called A Final Web. The Final Web. I'll have the name, the actual name, as well as a link in the description below where you can check out the artwork yourself. Okay, so let's get to making this card. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to be using this card in the art challenge. It's actually very nice artwork. It looks really cool within a card frame. Now, like I mentioned, we'll be making four different versions of this card. We'll make four versions, one at each rarity. There's common, uncommon, rare, and mythic rare. Uh, to be honest, I'm not too sure which one I want to start with. Do I want to make a very strong card based on this art? And then go all the way down towards uh, rare, then uncommon, then common. Or do I want to start at common and build up? Make it make it very varied uh, as we get stronger. I think I want to start at the bottom. Let's start at the bottom. Let's make this a common. So the first version of this card we're making is a common. So let's see. What do we have? Uh, one of the things I can do is I can shape up the artwork. So this, what you're looking at now in the card frame is what's below me. It's the very full picture. But if I want, I can focus in on different parts. So that's one thing that I'll probably do uh, to make each card different. Change the artwork. Change what is the focus of the card. Like, for example, right now, this looks like a creature. This, the way the card is shaped right now, it wants to be a creature. That's, that's a given. Also looks to be some sort of wizard. So let's go with blank wizard. It's probably going to be human. And I feel like a telling feature is the ears. So maybe it's going to be a human. Yeah, let's not be let's not be too funny. It's a human wizard. We see a lot of those at common. It's a human wizard. Okay, so what does this human wizard do? It looks like she's conjuring some sort of spell. She's weaving some kind of magic. I would say because of how the earth is moving around her. Uh, what kind of magic is that? Something with the wind. It has to be something with the wind because it's moving, it's moving the environment around her. So my guess would be wind. My music acted up. Oh, okay. So it's got some sort of wind magic about her. Uh... Is this an ETB effect when this creature enters the battlefield? Uh, when she enters the battlefield, what happens? What happens when she enters the battlefield? If it's wind, she's probably bouncing something back. So let's see. Return, target, creature, an opponent, controls. To his or her hand. That's very simple. No. We, we see that very much. We see that effect a lot. Within the game of magic. It's, it's something simple. Something uh, common. So it, it fits that common. Now we just got to give it a cost. Uh, power and toughness. And a name. Alright. Uh, 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 let's see. If we're going to give it any power and toughness. Well, first off, I feel like this is a blue spell. It's either a white spell or a blue spell. And I feel like because of her clothing, because of her clothing, we're going to have to go blue spell. So it, she is a blue creature. Uh, how about a two, two and a, two and a blue. A one, a one, two. For two and a blue. Does that sound right? I feel like that's right. Remember, blue doesn't get efficient creatures. Blue doesn't get efficient creatures. So if we look at it without an ability, 
If we look at it like she doesn't have any abilities, this is a one, two for three. Is that, I think that's right for blue, right? I think that's right because a two, two for two is typical. A two, two for two is typical. All right. So we have the cost. We have the power and toughness. Now we just have, we just got to give it a name. We just got to give it a name. Wind Weaver. Wind Weaver. Wind Weaver. Wind Weaver Mage. When Wind Weaver Mage. That doesn't exist already, does it? Let me check my database real quick. All right. Wind Weaver Mage does not exist already. We're good. All right. So that's our common. Wind Weaver Mage is a 1 2 that costs 2 and a uh, 2 and a blue. I almost said two in a yellow. Uh, and when Wind Weaver Mage enters the battlefield, return target creature and opponent controls to his or her hand. I think that's good. I think that's good at common. Now let's step it up. We got to make it a little bit bigger. Make it a little bit better. Uh, now we're going to go with our uncommon. So, so let's see. We have our uncommon. Is this still a creature? Is it still a creature? I'm going to change the artwork just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, so the artwork's been changed just a tad. Let's take a look at the difference. This is when Weaver made just artwork. And then if we take a look at the uncommon, you can see it zoomed in a little bit more. It wants more focus on the creature and her spell. So let's see. If we're going with this one, I, I still want this to be a creature. I'm unsure when we should jump from creature to non-creature. But this is a creature, definitely. This is probably still a human wizard. Uh, it's probably going to have an ETB, but it's going to be different. It's going to be different. An uncommon. Okay. If, uh, it's still going to have an ETB. So when this creature enters the battlefield, it does something. All right. But then we're going to change. I want to change the timing a little bit. All right. So normally you can only cast creature spells on your main phase. But there's an ability that we can give it so you can cast it whenever you have priority. Which means not only during the main phase, but during battle, after battle, uh, when your opponent plays a spell, things like that. So let's give it flash. Flash makes it so that you can cast the spell anytime you can cast an instant. You know, when you have priority. Okay. Uh, so now when we give it flash, we need to give it an ability that is relevant towards it coming into play whenever. We don't want this to just be played at any one set time. So when this creature enters the battlefield, what happens? Okay, so looking at the artwork. Looking at the artwork, she's conjuring a spell. Now if we give it flash, she's conjuring a spell what could be mid-battle. Why is she conjuring this spell mid-battle? It could be because she's trying to defend somebody. Is she trying to defend somebody? I think she would I think she would have to be. I don't want to give her that same ability of return something to its owner's hand. Uh and I guess I also want to keep it blue still. So we need to keep it in blue. Now that I think about it, is this a blue effect? Return target. Yeah, unsummon. We have unsummon. Okay, so that's a blue effect. All right. Uh, okay, so we're still on this card. When there's the battlefield, what's it doing? I don't want to give it unsummon again. But we've decided that this human wizard is coming into battle to defend somebody. Okay, I got it. When there's the battlefield, exile target creature an opponent controls until uh, until the next end step is that is that the right wording for it until the next end step I think that's that's probably not the right wording for it but what I want this to do is that uh, this human wizard comes into play and when she does you can exile target creature that opponent controls until the end of the turn. That's what I wanted to do. I think I hit it. I think I hit that. Just not the word. Again, it's uncommon. It's one step up from the Wind Weaver Mage. Because of Flash as well as the ability. Uh, let's give it a cost. 
I'm sorry, an attack in power and toughness, a cost in a day. All right, so if this is Flash and it's exiling something, it's got to be. It's got to be rigorously costed. Let's see. So it's a three U. This is cost four, three and a three and a blue. I feel like that's what it should cost. And still, power and toughness is is, is not in the right area for creatures, uh, for blue creatures. We've seen this a lot as well. A two two for four, a two two for three in the, in the blue. I think that that I think that works. All right, we got to give this one a name. The other one was Wind Weaver Mage. Wind Weaver Mage returns a creature to its owner's hand. Uh, yeah, hand. Okay. So this one, Ether, Ether. Ether Blast Mage. Yeah, I like that, huh? Ether Blast Mage. Is that yeah, that's dumb, isn't it? You can tell me if it's dumb or not. It's uh, my feelings will be hurt. Ether Blast Mage. What it's doing is it's exiling. It is is removing one creature from this this plane and moving into the ether just for for a uh, for a short period of time. I think that's. I don't like that one. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm, I don't like blue creatures in general. That's why I don't like it. All right, so we have our common and our uncommon. Let's take a let's take another step. Let's go for the the rare. This one will be our rare. Do I want to change the art? I think I want to change the art. Let me change it. All right, so this is going to be the artwork for our rare version of this card. Uh, you can see that's very zoomed in on both the mage and her spell. Uh, it's it's about here. It's it's very close up, and the only things in focus is her head, her hands, and uh, the spell. So this one, I feel like this is not a creature. Focus is not just on her her body. This one's not a creature. This one is a sorcery. Do we want sorcery? Yeah. If we're gonna go blue. Are we going to go blue? Yeah, we're going to go blue. Okay. We're going to go blue for this one. This is a sorcery. So this one, I don't feel this one is touching on the same area as the other two. The other two were focused on removing a creature from play, either temporarily or until the opponent wants to cast it again. I feel like this one's not in that area. Because once I zoomed in, I realized how much metal was on her. She's got she's got bangles all on her upper arm as well as towards her wrist. She's got rings on her finger. This one is this one is not in the same area. This one has to be different. I feel like this one should be relative towards artifacts. The blue is the color that likes artifacts the most. It uses artifacts the most. Red destroys them. So this one focuses on artifacts. I wanted to say something for artifacts. I wanted to do something for artifacts. I wanted to get better with artifacts. So let's see. Let's see. Okay, okay, okay. I know what this one is. I know what this one is. Um. Okay, so how about this? How about, let me let me get the wording down. What I want this to do, I want this to take an artifact you control and put it on the bottom of your library. And then you reveal cards from the top of your library up until you reveal an artifact. Then that artifact comes into play. That probably exists. That is a very basic spell. That probably exists. So let's turn it up a little bit. Let's turn it up a little bit. Okay, how about this? How about this? Put an artifact you Oh, oh, how about this? How about put a non-token artifact you control on the bottom of your library. That way we can't have any shenanigans where uh, players are making tokens that are artifacts, putting them on the bottom of the library, which means they won't exist, and then they're getting another artifact. We're not, no shenanigans here. Put a non-token artifact you control on the bottom of your library. Reveal cards... Reveal cards from the top of 
your library. Uh, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact. Uh, put that artifact onto the battlefield under your control. Shuffle, shuffle the, shuffle what? All other cards revealed this way. Other cards, excuse me, revealed this way. Uh, shuffle all cards revealed this way and put them. Uh, okay. Okay, how about this? How about this? Because now I'm thinking about it. Let's say let's say we have an artifact, any artifact. Let's say we have Soul Ring in play. And for one reason or another, I decide I want to make Soul Ring the first artifact in this in this card. Uh, affected by this card. Soul Ring would go to the bottom of my library. Then we reveal cards from the top of my library. Let's say it takes me 10 cards to reveal the next artifact. Which would be, I don't know. Worm's Tooth. The next card I reveal will be, will be Worm's Tooth. Okay, so that means I get Worm Tooth in play. And then I have 10 more cards being shuffled to the bottom of my library. Soul Ring is not at the bottom of my library. I want Soul Ring to either definitely be at the bottom or it's randomized somewhere in that pile that also got shuffled with it. So we can't put Target Artifact in the library. How about we Exile, Target, uh, exile target artifact you control. Then you reveal, you reveal cards. Put that artifact. Shuffle all cards. Shuffle, shuffle all other cards revealed or exiled this way. I hope that works within. Um, I hope that works within the game's language. And put them on the bottom of your library. Okay. Now, originally what I wanted is for after you put this card into play, if it has a tap ability, if it, I'm sorry, an activated ability. If it has an activated ability, that's an ability that reads cost colon effect. Uh, it would activate on the spot. I don't think I have enough space. I don't want to make this the mythic. I feel like I'm going to have to, though, because that's actually a lot. And I, I really d I think this card exists. Let me check my database real quick. Okay, so I have done the research, and it looks like there's no card that exists of this caliber. The closest thing we have is Indomitable Creativity, which was just introduced in Aether Revolt. Um, but that works on a multiple scale of this card. Also, is not just artifacts. So let's see. So I guess we can do this. I guess we can do this. The only thing is, Indomitable Creativity is a Mythic Rare. It's a Mythic Rare. So I feel like if we add anything else to this, it's going to have to go to Mythic Rare. Sometimes, sometimes simplicity is, is best. Okay, so that works. That works. Now, because it's a sorcerer, we don't need power and toughness, but we do need a definite cost, and we need an A. Exile target artifact you control. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact. Put that artifact onto the battlefield under your control. Shuffle all of the cards revealed or exiled this way and put them on the bottom of your library. Okay, so I think this does what I want it to do. Uh, let's cost it. Remember, you're more or less getting an artifact for free. You're more or less getting an artifact for free. Could be something big. Could be something little. We don't know just yet. So let's see. Uh, how about we give it... This is a very blue spell. Correct? I think so. So let's double, let's double blue it. And I think three and two blues is where it needs to be. I think that's the area it needs to be at. Exile target artifact you control. Reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal an artifact. Put that artifact onto the battlefield under your control. 
Shuffle all other cards revealed or exiled this way and put them on the bottom of your library. All right. So let's give it a name. Let's give it a name. Okay. So the reason I called this, or I, I decided it's going to be something done with artifacts instead of the other two uh, bouncing cards, is that she looks like she's wearing Ethereum. Ethereum is a metal within the Magic Universe. She looks like she's wearing Ethereum. So let's call her the Ethereum. Oh wait, it's not a creature. We can't call her that. Okay. How about... How about... Sculpting. Something sculpting. Something sculpting. Something sculpting. Ethereum sculpting? Is that... Is it that simple? Is it that simple? Ethereum sculpt sculpting? Eh. We'll call that a play test day. That's the play test day for it. <laughs> okay. We have our common. We have our uncommon. We have our rare. Now it's time to go to work. Uh, let's go for the mythic rare. Okay. So I have fixed the artwork up. You can see the very clear difference between this one, this version, and Ethereum Sculpting. Ethereum Sculpting was closer in. The rare version was more closer in. This Mythic Rare will be a little bit more zoomed out. You can see her upper body as well as um, the spell she's weaving. So let's see. How big and bad can we make this at Mythic Rare? At Mythic Rare, what is this? What does it do? What is she doing? What is she doing? It looks, to be honest, it looks like she's taking the essence of something like this. She's taking the essence of something. This isn't an enchantment, is it? This isn't an, I don't think it's an enchantment. Let's let's try it. Enchantment. You guys know, for those of you who don't know, I love me some enchantment. I don't want this to be like any other card that we've created. Let's see, we're not putting counters on it. I refuse. Don't let me put counters on this spell. What is happening? It looks like she's taking the essence of something. Okay. How about how about I'll kill the I'll kill the the spell type for now. We'll work we'll work from here. She's taking the essence of something. Okay. Exile. Exile target creature. Exile target creature. Put a... Or create. I forgot that's the new way to say put a token in the battlefield. Create an XX token where X... Oh, oh, that's that's ugly, chill. You know better than that. An XX blue... Uh, illusion? Illusion creature token. Where X is the exiled creature at the end of, wait, 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 at the end of, at the next, at the beginning of the, at the beginning of the next end step, beginning of the next end step, exile. Oh, uh, this is, this is, okay, okay, I see what to do. I see what to do. Uh, with, create an XX blue illusion creature token with, at the beginning of the next end step, exile this creature. Okay, so this creature will be gone at the next end step. No, no, no. I didn't do that right at all, did I? It has. I should say it has this. Just because of grammar and such. It has. Begin an exile. And then stop. Exile this creature. At the beginning of the next end step. Return. All creatures. Exiled by. To the battlefield. Okay, so what this card is doing, this spell, this is clearly not um, 
not a, a creature. This spell is exiling a creature. It's exiling Crater Hoof. It's exiling Crater Hoof Behemoth. Uh, what happens is you get... Oh. <laughs> XX is the converted mana cost. Okay, you get a, you get a creature... You get a token, an illusion token that is an uh, an XX of that creature, where X is the converted mana cost. So if we're exiling Crater Hoof, Crater Hoof costs what five and three greens. If we're exiling Crater Hoof, then this is going to create an eight eight blue illusion creature token. Um, shoot, it should have haste, right? It should have haste, or else it's not gonna do anything. It has haste, and at the beginning, okay. So I'm getting an eight-eight if I get rid of Crater Hoof, whether it's mine or my opponent's. Then it's gonna get haste, and at the beginning of the next end step, it's gone. So that means it can do whatever it wants right now. It can it can go in for the swing. If I need it to block, it can block. I don't know why it would be blocking, but you know it can. It can do all the works. Then at the end of the turn, it's gone. Um, also, when this illusion leaves, you're going to get back all creatures that were exiled by this card. That way, if you somehow copy this card, then it's, it's, it's going to bring back all the things that were gone by it. All things that were exiled by it. Um, uh, let's see. We're going to add in under its owner's control. So there's no funny business. Again, you can X out whatever creature you want. It's not restricted. Now, let's see. This I've, I'm going to guess that this has to be a sorcery just based on timing. Based on, on timing. Because we don't want to do this in the middle of an attack. That's kind of... You should expect... A combat trick, but this is not that combat trick <laughs> that you should expect. Very clearly, this is a U spell. This is a blue spell. It's a double blue spell. I don't want to see anybody else cast this. I kind of want to say it. Oh, it's not really triple U. It's not triple blue. That's pushing it. That's a, that's a very hard spell to cast if you are mixing colors. I'm just gonna say two. Uh, this is. Is it four? I feel like this should be four and two blue. I feel like this should be four and two blue. That's really, that's really doing it rough, but that's, I think that's what it needs to be. Exile target creature, put an XX blue illusion creature token. Oh, or create one where X is converted mana cost of the exiled creature. Uh, converted mana cost of the exiled of the uh, of the exiled creature. It has haste, and at the beginning of the next end step, exile this creature. At the beginning of the next end step, return all creatures ex. Ooh. Okay, just to avoid confusion, we're gonna sacrifice this creature. Sacrifice this creature because it looks like this card that I've created here. It looks like this card is trying to make the creature exile itself, the the token creature exile itself, and then by the very second ability, bring it right back. Creatures when creature tokens leave the battlefield, they're gone for good. They stop existing, so it's not going to bring it back. So just to avoid confusion, we're going to say sacrifice this creature. At the beginning of the next end step, return all creatures exiled by this card to the battlefield under their owner's... We're going to say their owner's. Their owner's control. All right. I think that's solid. I think that's pretty solid. Okay. So this one is... This one is Altered Reality. This is Altered Reality. That card exists. That card has to exist. Let me check my database. Doesn't exist. That is weird. 
It doesn't exist. Okay, so this is Altered Reality. Altered Reality is a sorcery that costs four and two blue mana. And it has two abilities. The first is Exile Target Creature. Create an XX Blue Illusion Creature Token, where X is converted mana cost of the Exile Creature. It has haste, and at the beginning of the next end step, sacrifice this creature. The second ability reads, at the beginning of the next end step, return all creatures exiled by Altered Reality to the battlefield under their owner's control. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, so we have four different cards, four very different cards, all based on their artwork, all created from their artwork. I believe that's called top-down design. Not entirely sure. Uh, which one is you guys' favorite? Uh, at the end of the video, we'll have a section where you can respond or you can take a look at all four of them side by side. And let me know which one you guys like the most. Now, as I promised, what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, some notes that I've, or some notes as well as feedback that I have received for cards that we created in the first episode of Card Crafters, cards that are associated with Death Shadow. Let's see. Okay, so we got feedback for two of the cards primarily, and we actually got a lot of positive feedback. Thank you guys on the Custom Magic subreddit. I'll have a link in the description below where you can check out the subreddit where I posted uh, these cards. Thank you guys for your feedback. I do appreciate it, um, and I, I will be able to make some changes based on your feedback. Okay, so I got feedback for two different cards. Uh, Death Caller was the first card. If you remember Death Caller? was the 2-1 human wizard that costs 2 and a black, and he has two abilities. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may draw a card and lose one life. And the second ability is, when Dust Caller or another creature you control dies, you may draw a card and lose one life. Okay. I had the make clauses so that you can decide whether or not you want to risk it for the biscuit this turn. But the feedback that I'm getting is that I should probably remove the make clauses because black never turns down power, you know, in the form of card draw. And it's very black to take the risk of not skipping extra draws. So we're going to go ahead and follow that one. We're going to remove the May clauses. If you have these, if you have Death Caller out, at the beginning of your turn, you have to draw an extra card and lose a life. Um, also, if a creature dies, you have to draw a card and lose a life, whether you need it or not. Uh, another bit of feedback. Change when this card or another creature you control dies to whenever... A non-token creature you control dies. And what was the reasoning behind that? Oh, it's it's more of a power thing. Like, you don't want to be too pow overpowered. And I can understand that. I understand that 100%. So we'll change it to whenever a non-token creature you control. Whenever a non-token creature you control dies. That's counting Death Caller, I believe. I believe that is including Death Caller. So when this creature dies as well. Uh, okay, so now Death Caller is a 2 1 for 3. Oh, I'm sorry, for 2 and a black. And he has two abilities. At the beginning of your upkeep, you draw a card and lose one life. So you're always drawing two cards and losing a life when this, guy come, when this guy's in play. And whenever a non token creature you control dies, you draw a card and lose one life. All right. Nice changes. I, I appreciate the changes, guys. Thank you. Also, we have Reckless Advance here. Reckless Advance is a cool card that throws everything in the air. That's that's exactly what I, I wanted to feel like, to be honest. I'm, the more plays you have, the more fun you can have with it. <sighs> okay, guys. That was Card Crafters. I enjoy sitting here and creating these cards. Once again, I'll have the different cards that we created today show up. At the end of the episode, you can take a look at them all side by side and figure out which one you like the most. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this episode and would love to see more, then all you have to do is hit that red button below this video. You know, the subscribe button. And I'll do my best to make sure you guys can see more interesting shows like Card Crafters as well as everything else that All Play has to offer. Thank you guys for checking this out. I'll catch you later with more here on All Play.